This is my hydraulic forging press. I made it using scrap steel and new hydraulic components. The reason I'm making this video is because often when someone posts a video of an interesting machine on YouTube, it's like 30 seconds long and it has them working it for, you know, 10 seconds. And maybe there's some neat features in there you'd really appreciate uh, some them elaborating on. You'd like to maybe incorporate that into your own design. But they just don't talk about it. So hopefully this, if anybody wants to build their own press, this will clear some things up for them and help them out a little bit. This is a 16 ton press when run at 2500 PSI. Right now I'm running it at 2000 PSI and I'm getting almost 13 tons of force. For what I've been playing around with that seems to be very adequate. I was fortunate in that the I-beam was gifted to me and all the other steel I got for scrap price. So I didn't have to spend a lot of money on steel. I would estimate this thing weighs around 400 pounds and if I had to pay for new steel that would probably end up costing me on a friendly price $400 for steel. If they didn't like me, $800. I bought all the hydraulic components for this press at Princess Auto, which is a Canadian store here that uh, deals with that kind of stuff, They're like a farm, farm store and also kind of like a Harbor Freight what like you guys have in America. So this is a tie rod cylinder with a 4 inch bore and a 12 inch stroke. I got this one on sale for $115. I believe when it's not on sale it's around $150. Moving over to the control valve. This is an Italian made control valve and it's a BM40 model and it cost me $150. Now when I was back in the store I realized I could have went with the BM30 or BM20, I'm not sure which one that exactly is. But the difference between the two is that one has only two ports here. It only has two ports for the hydraulic hoses, whereas this one has four. This one cost $20 more as a result of this feature. And I needed to spend $10 each on these plugs. So this ended up costing me $40 more. So that's a little bit of a loss that I didn't need to incur. Now I have a pressure gauge here on the press. On the bottom of the press here, I have a five gallon reservoir. Now I bought the this, the economy one, so it was $100. Moving on, there's a two stage gear pump. This is a five horse gear pump and it, the two stages are three and 11 gallons per minute. The gear pump cost $150. Now this motor is a three horse motor, fast speed, which my father gave me. It came off an old tile saw. If I had to buy a motor, I would buy a five horse motor and it would cost me in the neighborhood of 500 Canadian. The hoses and all the miscellaneous fittings and everything ended up costing me more than three or four hundred dollars and that's because I had to go back to the store a couple of times to change things because they weren't right or get a different length cut or something like that. If you're doing something like this, uh, measure everything properly and familiarize yourself with exactly what you need otherwise you're gonna spend money. So what I bought was this protective hose and it's supposed to help against uh, leaks. And also, it's going to help against hot steel. This doesn't cost much. The sleeve is something like, it's less than a dollar a foot, so it's not much uh, insurance. Not much for good insurance. The hoses themselves, I got them on sale, and it was like $2 a foot. And they're 5,100 uh, 5, PSI hoses. Now, the ram assembly is very simple. It's just a, a sliding ram here. And the, the dies are also very simple. You just place, place the dies in there slide them in and I have these little pins here to put on the top which hold the die in place if anything happened to be if anything happened to go loose now I got all the info for my press from these two books build your own hydraulic forging press this is written by James Batson James L Batson I'd recommend you buy this from Blue Moon Press they're very good people to deal with I'll put the I'll put their link in my description and also the Princess Auto Driveline data book the driveline data book has a lot more uh, detailed information on hydraulics, but the Batson book has blueprints for two different presses. The, the blueprints aren't great, especially for the H-frame press, they're kind of really difficult to read. But there's a lot of specific information on hydraulics, in particular for, press, for forging presses, as well as supplier lists and all that, and also has details for, for materials needed if you were to make your own press or like the load bearing capabilities of different materials to make a safe press. I'll give you a quick demo of uh, the speed of this thing. So 
So it's a pretty fast press uh, from what I've seen online anyway. Now, if I were to redo this, I would change the design a little bit just to have a lot less welding. There's a C-frame press that Larry Langdon built of uh, Quick and Dirty Tools. I'll put the link to their Facebook page in the description as well. And if you look under their video files, you can see what they did with their press. They did something much more clever. Instead of using an I-beam on the bottom and the top, they put a thick one inch plate on the top and one inch plate on the bottom and they teed it with another one inch plate. And this avoids all the, all the welding I had to do here, stiffen it up and all that. And it also means you have to do less welding here on your thrust block to make it as, as strong. So if I were to redo the press, I would do what they did with that bar. It's just a much better idea, I think, than, what, than if you were to buy new material and all that. In hindsight, one other thing I could do with this press is install a second cylinder on the other side to do other operations on the same heat. It would only cost you, the control valve would have to be new, it would have to be a better control valve uh, that you could run two cylinders on. You would need a second cylinder on the other side and you'd have to of course weld up all the ram assembly and all that. So it's a little bit more work but if you if you're doing that kind of stuff it would really be worth it. It's just something to consider. If you guys build a cool machine please instead of uploading like a 30 second video put a detailed video up like this one and let us know how you built it why you built it, what purpose it's going to serve, uh, what you would do differently and all that stuff. It's, it's really helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy the video. Bye.